Our voyage into the Australopithecine fossil record begins with one of the less well-known representatives of Australopithecus, Australopithecus anamensis. Discovered within the last 20 years, the fossil remains that represent Australopithecus anamensis are the earliest representatives of Australopithecine that we have in the fossil record, dating back to approximately 4 million years of age. The fossils I'll be talking about today come from northern Kenya, a little bit into southern Ethiopia, and areas in the Lake Turkana Basin, specifically the sites of Kanapoi and Aliyah Bay. And when we look at the fossils for Australopithecus anamensis, what we see is similar in fact to the dental remains that we saw with Ardipithecus. We see a dentition that, while more primitive than the human dentition we see today, and even the later Australopithecines that we'll see, is similar to apes but also more derived in terms of a reduction in the canine complex, an expansion in the molar dentition, and an expansion in the thickness of the enamel on the molar surfaces. Here on the left you see, in fact, a reconstruction of an upper canine, lower canine, and lower third premolar in Australopithecus anamensis. And what we see is, much like with Ardipithecus, we have the same still diamond shape to the canines, so they are still more pointed, more projecting in some ways, than the canines we see in humans today. But that diamond shape is included within an overall reduced size canine. This is not a large canine. It's not one that has a big associated honing complex associated with it. We don't see the morphology on the premolar that we would see in a true distally honing canine. There's a little bit of distal wear on the back of the canine, but also notice that there's a little bit of apical wear at all. We're getting some of that apical wear that we associate with how hominins chew. We're also beginning to see the development of a little bit more pronounced distal tubercle in the canine. Now eventually we'll see this much more elaborately developed in later Australopithecines and eventually the genus Homo and ourselves, but we're beginning to see signs of this in early Australopithecus anamensis fossils. Now again, there's much similarity between anamensis seen on the left and the dentition that have been reconstructed for Ardipithecus ramidus seen on the right. Anamensis dating to 4 to maybe 4.2 million years of age is not that far off in time from Ardipithecus, which has been documented at 4.4 million years of age. So it's not surprising to see these kinds of similarities. And again, we see this stark difference between what we see in Anamensis, Ardipithecus, and what we see, for example, in living apes, with a very large projecting canines and associated structures of a honing complex. But what really distinguishes Anamensis is the primitiveness of the jaw coupled with the development and derivation of the postcranial skeleton. Here we see two mandibles that have been associated with anamensis coming from the site of Kanapoi in northern Kenya. And one of the first things to notice is they have this U-shaped jaw that we are used to seeing actually in apes. The overall shape of the jaw remains very much ape-like. However, the reduced canines, the expanded molars, and the thickened enamel on the molars are all hominin characteristics. They all reflect a derived status relative to presumably the last common ancestor of humans and apes some five to seven million years ago. The truly exciting specimens from Anamensis though are some of the postcranial elements, which give clear signs of bipedality. One of the most well documented is this specimen on the right, a proximal tibia, in other words the lower part of your knee. Now what distinguishes this as a bipedal specimen is the amount of bone which is situated in this proximal surface here. Notice that there's this thick development of bone just beneath the tibial condyles. This is where your femur sits right on top of this. And during bipedal locomotion, of course, you carry the entire weight or your, almost your entire weight through your knee. So that this joint needs to support a significant amount of body mass. More so than in, for example, a chimpanzee, which when it's walking, when it's moving, supports only a portion or a fraction of its body weight through any individual joint because it's using multiple limbs at the same time. So the development of this tibial plateau in chimpanzees is much reduced relative to that which we see in anamensis. So the thickened tibial plateau in anamensis is evidence that it was walking bipedally and engaged in some kind of bipedal locomotion. So bipedal locomotion coupled with a still ape-like jaw but with the derived dentition and dental pattern are the key characteristics which distinguish Australopithecus anamensis from earlier ape-like ancestors. They might also connect it to Ardipithecus and establish a potential lineage between later Ardipithecus and earlier Australopithecus. This has been argued by some authors as the origin of Australopithecines coming out of Ardipithecus. We'll see next 
The truly immense amount of fossils that we have associated with Australopithecus afarensis, and the most famous of all, the specimen AL288-1 that we refer to as Lucy.